I want to tell you a little science story, and it's a story about me. It's a, in a way, it's a story about what got me interested in science, because I thought that would be appropriate. This person here is Richard Feynman. This young person here is, is me. And Richard Feynman made me want to be a scientist for a number of reasons. Uh, when I was a high school student, I took a, a special some summer program, and I was bored. And the teacher came down. And, and said, you look bored, and he gave me a book. And in fact, I think if, if this works, it does. This was the book. Uh, it's called The Character of Physical Law by Richard Feynman. And he said, look, this is a book by a guy who won the Nobel Prize recently for proving that antiparticles are particles going backwards in time. Thought, wow, this is amazing. So I took the book home, and I read the chapter. I didn't understand any of it. Um, <laughs> but it was really neat. But what the thing that was important for me, and I, I hope all of one, of one of the things I like to tell students, because we tend to teach science, as I said the other night, by, as if it's done by dead white men. And when I looked at this, I realized, you know, not all the problems are solved. There's still an incredible number of things we need to, to understand about the universe. And it was the first time that I thought a career in physics might actually be worthwhile. Might be, you might, there were things left to discover, that all the great things hadn't been known. And it changed my life completely. Now, like all good physics undergraduates, I'm sure Brian and Neil at very least, I carried around with me the Feynman Lectures on Physics. Uh, he rewrote all of introductory physics in his own style. He, he was incredibly charismatic and an amazing teacher. And I carried them around. Again, I couldn't understand them. Uh, but I thought by osmosis, I would, I, if I carried them around long enough, it was only when I was a graduate student that I really began to appreciate the depth of those descriptions. And that kind of, as I thought of being an educator, the idea, what was amazing about Feynman was that he conveyed his excitement and his interest and the integrity of science, as I'll talk about in a second. Now, I was lucky enough, as it turned out, when I was an undergraduate to meet Feynman at a, at a meeting up in Canada, and uh, this was actually taken in for, for a physics magazine. And I'm pleased we were actually talking physics at that instant. But uh, I spent most of the weekend with him because um, I brought my girlfriend at the time, and she was one of the few women. And um, Feynman, if you knew anything about Feynman, he, was, he decided to spend most of his time with us. And, um, and uh, besides actually teaching me how to dance, he convinced me we had long talks about adventure and seeking out adventure. And I know for me, for him, science was an adventure, and it is for me, but it was everything in life was an adventure. Learning, just the pleasure of finding things out, as he wrote. And, and, that, and that became infectious for me and, and, uh, and, chained, and, and, and invigorated me to become a, uh, a scientist. Now, it turned out many years later, when I, when I was at Harvard, I, I gave a colloquium at, at, uh, at Caltech, where Feynman was, was teaching. And, um, and, he, and it was very intimidating, of course, but he asked a good question. Then he came up afterwards to talk to me. And I really wanted to remind him. I, knew, I was certain he wouldn't remember our weekend together. And, uh, and he wanted to ask me a question, but there was a very annoying assistant professor who would not stop asking me questions. I'm very happy to say he didn't get tenure. Uh, <laughs> but, but, Feynman, but Feynman walked off, and I thought, well, I'll, I'll catch him later. But he died shortly afterwards, so I never was able to to, to tell him what he meant to me. And, I, and, and, and as a result, I wrote a whole book about Richard Feynman because uh, for me, he captured the, the way science is done. I'm going to let him tell you in the last minute his own story, or at least a, uh, the way he saw science. But, but, but I, I want to tell you one of the facts about science, the kind of things that would amaze him and amaze me. All of you take a breath. Hold it in. I can't see you. You still holding it? No, you can let it out now. Okay, good. Well, it is, there's, a non, there's, a, there's a possibility, in fact, a likely possibility, that with every breath you take, you are breathing in atoms that Richard Feynman breathed out when he, when he, he gave the interview I'm about to show you. And every time I'm sitting at my desk, not getting anything done, feeling ignorant and incompetent, I like to think that I'm breathing in atoms from Richard Feynman. And that sense of joy and mystery, to me, is what science is all about. And no one conveyed it better than Feynman, and so I'll let him finish this off in his own words. You see, one thing is I can live with doubt and uncertainty and not knowing. I think it's much more interesting to live not knowing than to have answers which might be wrong. 
I have approximate answers and possible beliefs and different degrees of certainty about different things, but I'm not absolutely sure of anything. And there are many things I don't know anything about, such as whether it means anything to ask why we're here and what the question might mean. I might think about it a little bit. If I can't figure it out, then I go to something else. But I don't have to know an answer. I don't, have to, I don't feel frightened by not knowing things, by being lost in the mysterious universe without having any purpose, which is the way it really is, as far as I can tell, possibly. It doesn't frighten me. He wasn't frightened, and he loved mysteries, and that's what science is all about, to me. Thanks. <laughs>